going everyone my name is george and today we're going to be continuing our review series of batman movies with batman begins um i know some people are probably wondering what about the michael keaton films as well as the movies that val kimmore and george clooney were batman i'm gonna do those later in the year in the fall leading up to the flash since michael keaton is returning in the flash film so before the batman comes out we're gonna focus on the dark knight trilogy at least and this is by far my favorite origin film of all time, my favorite comic book origin movie of all time. And it was directed by Christopher Nolan. And this was my introduction to Nolan as well. Like, I'm a huge Christopher Nolan fan. I love some of his other movies that have come out. And maybe in the future, I'll review those other movies like Inception, The Prestige, Interstellar. But yeah, we're going to focus on the Dark Knight trilogy. And we're going to start with Batman Begins, which came out in 2005. A year after Spider-Man 2, two years after X-Men United, um, eight years after Batman and Robin came out, which was the last Batman movie that was in theaters. And that hurt the Batman franchise for quite a while. There were many attempts to try to reboot Batman, including a Batman and Superman movie in the early 2000s, but none of those ever got picked up, so they gave it to Nolan. And this film stars Christian Bale, Michael Caine, Liam Neeson, and many other great actors in the film. And this explores the origin of Batman. Why Bruce Wayne became Batman. And I know the previous movie I talked about, Batman Mask of the Phantasm, touched upon the origin a little bit. But that was more for the Batman animated series universe. This is in live action. And I think this film goes into much more detail on the origin from the death of the Waynes. Uh, Bruce's fear of bats to him tra training with Ra's al Ghul and learning to become this vigilante the establishing of the no kill rule like this film goes into detail on these things that we should know about Batman and I think Christopher Nolan has a really good understanding of Batman and who he is I know some people criticize Nolan because his films are more realistic and stuff like that but he understands these comics like Batman Begins takes influence from many popular Batman comic books and comic book story arcs. Batman Year One is obviously going to be the main comparison to Batman Begins. Other examples are The Man Who Falls. So Nolan understands Batman pretty well. I think he just has a more realistic approach to directing Batman. Now as far as the cast goes, I like Christian Bale a lot as Bruce Wayne. I think as far as adapting the Bruce Wayne side of Batman, Christian Bale has probably done the best out of the actors. I know a lot of people give him a lot of crap because of his voice in the later Batman movies when he's being Batman, but I think Christian Bale gets the Bruce Wayne side of things really well. He captures the seriousness of Bruce Wayne. He captures, you know, the torture that Bruce Wayne goes through. As well as like when he's out in public and he's playing off the playboy personality to make sure people don't suspect that he's Batman. Because it's pretty convenient that when Bruce Wayne comes back to Gotham, Batman comes out of nowhere. So he's got to play this, this doesn't care about anything. He's a playboy billionaire side and he does that very well. And I think as far as when he's in the suit, I think this is his best performance in the Batman suit. I actually like his Batman voice in this movie. I don't know why he had to change it in the next two movies, but hey, I think this was like his best as far as being in the costume. And another great performance in this film is Michael Caine as Alfred. This is, in my opinion, the best Alfred we've seen on the big screen. I'm looking forward to seeing what Andy Serkis does because it looks like they're going to do something different in the Batman. But Alfred... For Michael Caine's Alfred, to me, like he's his interactions with Christian Bale's Bruce are some of my favorite in this trilogy. Gee, this is probably my favorite duo uh, when it comes to superhero movies because Alfred really cares about Bruce and he takes protecting Bruce and the legacy of the Wayne family very seriously. And you know, he comes and he sometimes bu bumps heads with Bruce about that. Basically saying, like, it's just not your name, it's also your father's name, and it's all that he has left. Just like, and basically how he doesn't give up on Bruce, and Bruce keeps saying that. He's like, you still haven't given up on me. So, 
stuff like that, what Michael King does in these movies, I really love. And another great ally of Bruce, of Batman's in these movies is, is Gordon. Now, he's not Commissioner Gordon yet, but like Gary Oldman's performance as Commissioner Gordon is also one of my favorites when it comes to Commissioner Gordon on the big screen, even though he's not Commissioner yet. But just what Gary Oldman brings to this character and how they establish the trust between Batman and Gordon how Gordon was one of the few good cops in a city where most of the cops are corrupt. He's the one cop that comforts Bruce when his parents die and reassures him that everything's going to be okay. Just like the detail Nolan puts into building these relationships and partnerships up really works. And this is probably my favorite like G Gordon, Batman, man team up as far as Batman media goes. Now, one unpopular opinion I kind of have when it comes to the casting of these movies is I don't mind Katie Holmes as Bruce's childhood friend, Rachel Doss. Um, I know she's gotten a lot of criticism for her performance, and yeah, compared to some of the other main actors, she is the weakest link of the main stars. But when rewatching it, I feel like her performance has actually gotten better over time, and I think her chemistry... Katie Holmes's chemistry with Christian Bale, in my opinion, works better than Maggie Gyllenhaal when she takes over the role of Rachel in Christian Bale's chemistry in The Dark Knight. I think that's one thing that I kind of prefer from Batman Begins over The Dark Knight, as well as the fact that Gotham looks more like Gotham in this movie than in The Dark Knight. It starts to look more like a regular city. But yeah, I don't mind... Katie Holmes as Rachel Doss. I actually think her performance has gotten better over time. I love Morgan Freeman as Lucius Fox. Brilliant casting. Sting. Like these actors work really well together in this film. And especially when like we see some of these characters continue to return. Like Gordon, Lucius, Alfred, uh, Bruce. Like over time like these characters. Like these four group groups of characters just work so well in this trilogy. And Liam Neeson plays the main antagonist, Ra's al Ghul. Ghul. Although, at first, he says he's not Ra's al Ghul. He's Henry Dunkirk. And there's a fake Ra's al Ghul played by Ken Watanabe. And I think Liam Neeson does a great job as playing this mentor-turned-enemy of Bruce's. How he's training Bruce to become better. And, like, he sees Bruce as what he wants. And I love that they're taking that from the comics. How, like, he... How Ra's wants... Bruce to become the new leader of the League of Shadows but Bruce does not want to kill anyone and I love how like at the beginning of the film it shows that he wanted to kill Joe Chill but then Rachel literally slapped some sense into him and he doesn't want to become a murderer and that's the one thing that Raz thinks is holding him back and I know his name is pronounced Ra's al Ghul but in the film they, they call him Raz al Ghul um Killian Murphy as Scarecrow, Dr. Crane, is also great. I think this is one of the better secondary villains in a comic book movie. Usually the secondary villain, like, isn't bad, but doesn't really add much to the film. But Killian Murphy as Dr. Crane, a.k.a. Scarecrow, works very well in this movie. And, yeah, this, is an, and yeah, this film kind of established certain actors to appear in multiple Christopher Nolan movies later on. Michael Caine, Killian Murphy, Ken Watanabe, Christian Bale, like outside of like the Dark Knight movies. But yeah, I love Hans Zimmer's score. I think it's a very epic score, especially the chase scene when Batman's in the tumbler and he's trying to get Rachel to the Batcave because she's been poisoned. And that chase scene when the police are chasing after him, I just love the score. I love the action. I love the costume in this film. I actually think this is one of the better Batman costumes. Um, as far as any complaints, I really don't have any complaints with this movie. I think this movie does what it's supposed to do very well. And it's an emotional movie. And I'm not saying that none of the other Batman movies had emotional moments. Like, Batman Returns had some emotional moments. The first Batman film did. Mask of the Phantasm was very emotional for an animated movie. But between Hans Zimmer's powerful, powerful score... You see, like, what Bruce went through as a child from, you know, falling down. 
him down into a cave where a bunch of bats freaked him out. And the guilt that he feels when his parents die because he wanted to leave leave the play. And it was right after they left the play that Joe Chill shot and killed the Waynes. Just like the journey Bruce goes through in this movie shows like how tragic of a character Batman is. And I think they nailed it very well. And I love how like this film sets up the next film with the Joker card. But at the same time, it also ends in a way where, like, if no other films were made, like, this would still be the perfect Batman movie. And I'm glad we got back The Dark Knight after this. And I'm looking forward to talking about The Dark Knight because that's my favorite comic book movie ever. But just the way things are presented in this movie, the character development of characters, I felt like when it came to the Burton movies, as much as I enjoyed them, like, most of the focus was more solely on Batman, Bruce Wayne, and the villains. I feel like with Batman Begins, you saw them focusing on the other characters like Gordon, Alfred, Rachel, Lucius. And that's great to see because Batman has a great rogue of characters. Not just villains, but supporting characters. And it was great to see them also be put on the spot in this film. And... Yeah, the film has a good balance of humor as well. There's also there's been there's some funny moments, whether it's the banter between Lucius and Bruce, uh, some of the things Alfred says, uh, some of the Playboy antics that Bruce does, including in this one restaurant where he decides to buy the place and go swimming with these with these models that he's with. But the film still delivers an emotional punch, and I highly recommend you check out Batman Begins if you haven't already. I think it's a great movie with great action, great performances, great characters, great costumes. Seems basically everything I feel like in this film is great. And I know for some people this will be their favorite of the Dark Knight trilogy or their favorite Batman film. Not everyone thinks the Dark Knight is. And I think it's for the reasons I met that I brought up. How like it delivers an emotional punch and shows Bruce Wayne on this journey of trying to become a symbol to prevent anyone else from getting killed like his parents do. And yeah, I'm going to give Batman Begins an A+. I love this movie. I think it's one of, if not the best origin story ever. It's definitely my favorite. And this film has, it's actually going to be 17 years since this movie came out. That says a lot. And it still holds up very well. And... Yeah, it's on DVD, Blu-ray, probably on streaming services, TV. So go watch it if you haven't already. If you have, what did you guys think about Batman Begins? Do you think it's one of the best Batman movies ever or the best Batman movie ever? And what's your favorite origin story? For me, it's this. And also up there, my top three are the first Iron Man and Spider-Man movies. So what do you guys think about Batman Begins? Comment below and let me know. And I know I have a Superman shirt on. I didn't put my Batman shirt on today. But hey, it's still DC. And I cannot wait to talk about the big one. The Dark Knight. That's one of my fa That's my favorite movie of all time. Or one of my favorite movies of all time. And that's going to be fun to revisit. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe already if you haven't. Please share this with someone who loves Batman. Who's a big fan of Batman Begins. And I hope to see you guys real soon. Take care, everyone.